All right, we are back. And this time I want to talk about those sigil modules. Yeah, they are very expensive to grind, but they go very easy, including your currency. So I want to go through a couple of the methods that I use, try, I use to try and get the most out of my currency and my sigil mods, both for those who have a lot of sigil mods and those who have very few. In other words, those who are very early in the game, I think this method should help improve your luck. It's still, it's still luck oriented and there's nothing you can really do about that, but it should improve that luck and give you much better results for your materials. But before we get into that, remember, like or dislike the video. And if you're not sub yet, well, drop us up. And I do have a Twitter or X. You can find these information down in the description. Just, you know, go through them, help the channel out. But anyways, let's just get straight into the meat of this proposition. All right, let's talk about some sigils and sigils effect. So first thing first, if you're rolling for your damage carry, remember that you are trying to get eight attack up, eight critical up, and as much critical damage as you possibly can. Some character might not need all eight critical up, and they might need more critical damage, but it is very important that there is really no scaling cap and attack, and it's always effective. So always try to hit that eight attack up and fill out the rest. And remember, if you don't have enough crit rate, your crit damage is useless. So that is also something to take into consideration. However, supports are a little different. Supports are generally gonna need loot backs because many of them biggest buff our support capability are actually in their ultimate so you want to actually cycle through their ultimate as fast as possible keep that in mind another thing is energy mods tend to spam their skill a lot and their skills tend to be very expensive it is also very important and in your best interest to try and roll as much energy digital effects as you possibly can because they really do help especially on the mods what you rage and energy this is a good example when you're talking about a character such as izanami izanami is very very rage hungry she needs a lot of range because her skills have reasonably low cooldown and she needs to cycle through them. This also reduced the amount of normal attack she actually needs to do to get the rage she needs to execute her skills. Frankly speaking, your skills with Izanami, they should never be up because the only way they're gonna really be up is less, you know, condition of the fight or the majority of the time is you don't have enough rage to actually execute them. So keep in mind, characters that use energy and rage do need these passives. So when you're rolling, don't throw them away. You should keep them on your rage and energy mob. Almost every single character that needs energy and rage are very, very starved for them. And most characters simply don't do enough damage on their normal for you to continuously use normal attack to regain that resource. All right, so that's just the main thing I want to focus on those things. Now let's get straight into the meat of the conversation. So let's say you have a limited amount of resource. How do you go about using them? Okay, we always have a limited amount of resource, but when I say that, I'm saying in the context is Maybe you have just done a few characters like in really short succession or you're new to the game. How do you go about doing that? 
The first thing is knowing what you need. And like I mentioned, if you're doing your damage carry, you need your offensive stats. But keep in mind that each sigils will come with predefined stats. They come with predefined stats. And what you're actually trying to do, you're trying to fill in the blank. So let's take a look here. So we have attack here. We have attack here. We have attack here. So we already have four attack up. So what do we need? Well, we need four more because we want to hit that cap of eight. This changes if you have your character at triple S, you will get one rank and whatever sigil effects you actually have. So if this was triple S character, you will only need three more. But in this example, we need four more. So how do we get these desirable stats? Well, you will need to fish and fishing, meaning using your resource to find that specific stats. Now, if you don't have a lot of resource or you're new to the game, this is the method I recommend and that is to fish. You're able to fish with your purples and that's mostly what you should do with your purples unless you need to convert them into tier threes. So purples or tier two, you use them to fish because they will give you tap stats. So at the top, you go here and you will continually to fish until you find the desirable stat. In this example, I would want attack up. So I would continue to fish with my purples until I get my desirable stat. After that, I will simply move on and then I will fish again. And I'll fish and fish until I get all of the attack I need. Go to all of them. You have 12 slots that you can choose. That means in a case like this where you need four more, obviously you're only gonna have eight more to go. And this is what we're gonna work with that. You go through all of them and then you fish out the attack stat. And then you go like, What's the next thing you need? You need crit. Well, you go in again and then you fish again for the crit. And the, obviously not overriding what you already have though, right? And once you have, once again, like I said before though, some character need a different amount of crit rate because maybe in their founder, they get a boost in crit rate or they have something in their codes or Maybe they just have a support character what feeds them a lot of crit rate and you're going to always run them with those characters. So you're not going to really want to get all eight crit rate. And if that's the case, maybe you only need two or three. You just choose what you actually need. Let's see how much we have here. We have one. I've got two. All right. So we got only two crit. That means we need six more. This means you are literally going to need 12 stats, 12 slots to get eight attack, eight crit, and that only leaves you with one. And this brings us to a dilemma. While fishing with purples is very efficient of giving you your offensive stats, it does get a little more difficult to get you well, you pretty much can't get the second line with the purples, right? But I do recommend the purples to fish out your stuff. And I'm gonna make sure I repeat this because this point is very, if you don't have a lot of resource, for example, you're new to the game or you've done successive characters, so you are low on resource. In other words, you don't have enough tier threes. I do recommend you fish out the stats you need. You fish out your attack, then you fish out your crit, then you fish out your crit damage. Obviously speaking, and to keep this in mind, while you're fishing at the beginning, and for example, you're fishing and you're fishing, and the crit or the crit damage comes up first, you should take it and don't go and just override it. Obviously, you just need to fill in the amount you need. And if you want eight attack and eight crit, you're gonna need to roll 10 times. So, and then there's only like, what? Two more slots left for crit damage? Not really a big deal, right? So 
you do what you simply do. Whatever comes up first, you take it. But obviously, when you actually hit the cap of each of the stats you're looking for, you're gonna need to just keep fishing and fishing and fishing. And this is the idea, is fishing. You're fishing for the desirable stat. So if you already have all of the crit you need, all of the attack you need, and now you're looking for the crit damage, you know, you're gonna have to keep going and going. And this is what makes fishing very efficient because you're gonna run into the situation where you already have all the stats you need except this one or that one. And so you use your purples and then you fish. All right, that is the fishing method. But this comes at a cost. The cost is you will not get any bottom stats at all. No bottom effect. And now you're gonna need to go in and you're, need to, you're gonna need to lock in what you have and then you need to roll with your tier three and it's gonna cost you five. Now, on average, it takes around 50. In other words, 10 tries to get something desirable. Remember, when you're doing this, don't go for what you're looking for or what you want, go for what is useful. Because if you try to go for what you want, you will burn out of these as fast as possible. You just will not have enough because at five for one ratio, that is an immense. So go for what is useful, not for what you want. So if you already have, you already have eight attack, eight crit, you probably thinking to yourself, oh man, I want eight crit damage. Well, if you have infinite amount of these, sure, but you don't. So don't shoot for that. There's other things what will boost your damage such as elemental attack or maybe ultimate damage, stuff like that. And once again, like I mentioned before, some characters do need rage or they need energy. For, for example, is a Nami with more efficiency in a way she produce her rage and use her rage allows her to do a lot more damage. So don't just go for what you want, but go for what you useful for your character and move on. Because if you keep going for what you want and you're burning those, you're gonna lose and you're not gonna come out ahead. So that's what you do when you're using the fishing method. All right, now, if you have a lot of resource, let's say you have around 600, like how I do right now, you can use this method and this method requires you to have a blank slate right and I, I i don't i don't i'm not gonna go to that okay okay a blank slate let's say you just got your sigils equipped you just level them up and it's finally time for you to enchant your sigils but you have a reasonable amount of resort let's say you have like 600 tier 3 like i do well this method can be more expensive, but you generally, if you have enough and willing to use it, you could come out ahead. In other words, you could come out with things like this, oh. right? You can come out with things like this, right? Yeah, this, you know, and this, these are awesome, right? These are yes. awesome, but they are expensive unless you're very lucky. So. How do we go about doing this? Now, when you have nothing on your sheet, remember, you need the crit, the crit damage, and the attack up. So in this rate, we need what? Four attack up, six crit, and the remainder into crit damage. But we have a totally blank slate. Well, having a blank slate is good news. Remember, while you get to choose, right, or roll the bottom slot, cost you five, just while rolling regularly only costs you one. And when you actually roll, you get two. Well, you get all two slots filled. Well, if you are at the bottom, it doesn't matter what you get. In a character, your damage carry, it, 
when you're starting out, you're gonna need the crit damage, you're gonna need the crit rate, and you're gonna need the attack. Well, you're gonna keep using your tier threes until one of the three comes around. And the good news is, when you're using your tier three, and you're gonna choose one of the three in the beginning, there is a chance of you getting a good stat. Yeah, and I'm, I'm using them for a demonstration. Uh, okay, so an example like this, you get a tap. Now, if my sheet was blank, this would actually be not that great. But you know what? I still got the attack anyways, but there is a chance if my character needed rage and rage showed up here, this would be a huge win for me because I only use like, let's say six, six tries, six or seven tries, whatever, I wasn't counting, six or seven tries and I got the attack up. If I was really lucky, there could have been a chance where I got, let's say, attack up here and crit here, whatever, maybe loot back. It could be anything. But once you hit the first desirable stat, you're going to move on. And then you go to your next one and you would do the same thing. And you go here again. I got a crit. Okay, now I got a crit. I still need crit. I still need attack. I still need crit damage. And you will do this until you get one of the offensive top line stats. Or if it comes at the bottom, if it comes at the bottom, even better. And this, I don't, I, 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 I think I mentioned this. So let me mention this since we're he, we're at this point now. It is easier to get red at the top than it is to get red at the bottom. It's easier to get blue at the bottom than it is to get blue at the top. That is something to be, well, keep in mind. Be, be very mindful of that. So when you're using your tier threes, there is just a chance of giving you a better results. So when you roll and you might like, look at this, this is, this is pretty good. This could be the luck that you would get, but this can also go sideways, right? Remember though, don't try to fish for specifics with your tier three. You tend to lose. Only really use your tier threes when you have a blank slate and you're looking for any desirable stats. You use your tier three. This is the second most efficient way. The other way, and this one is the greed way, is just to go all in. So what you will do, you will essentially use your tier three to, to single fish. So you will continue to roll your tier threes until you get I guess the best way to put it is if you already have all of your desirable stats. So you got all your desirable stats, but you don't have balance. You don't have it balanced up. For example, you're still short of one attack, right? You have seven attack, you need one more attack. You can use the greed method with the tier threes to keep on rolling. You keep rolling with your tier threes until the attack comes up. Remember, you're no longer taking whatever you get. You're looking specifically for that attack up. And while you're doing this with the tier three, there is a chance of whatever red stats, maybe a crit damage, maybe a crit rate, whatever, it could be elemental will show up on the bottom line. And when you get a really, really desirable stats, either the attack comes first or a really desirable stats comes at the bottom first. So whichever comes first, you know, a desirable, let's say crit damage comes here or the attack you're looking for, whichever comes first, that's what you're gonna go for. The, remember, this is purely chance based, but you're gonna actually need 
to use five anyways. So using around 20 or even 50 of your tier three for this method can be really, really good, but it does, you need luck. You, you actually need luck. The good news is it is very rewarding, but it's expensive. It is very expensive and I don't recommend this method if you don't have a lot of resource because 600 might look like a lot, but remember, you need to take these tier three. If you do any of the other methods, you still need to use these tier three to fish out the bottom lines, right? And you, you're not gonna be really be able to do this particular method for every single one. Only when you're looking for like one or two specific Sigil effects, you want to use this. But you know what? In the grand scheme of things, using 50 to roll, right, and pos have the possibility of getting an attack up or a crit or a crit damage or a loot box or whatever it is on the bottom line, you know, getting like red on the bottom line is very, very good if you have the resource for it. Because remember, while you're still looking for attack, it is much easier to lock the bottom and to roll out an attack at the top line. Huh? Is there anything else I wanna talk about? Not really. That should pretty much be it. I, I, I used some of my resources, <laughs> right? And uh, hopefully I don't hurt too much. I don't think it was too much, but Hopefully I made, you know, a very good point, a good selling point, right? And how you kind of fish out the most desirable stat. When you look at my Izanami, this is how I end up with this stats and Izanami. I used the fishing method and I came out ahead as, you know, being one off. And, you know, Berserk is not too bad because you already have 51 but only bring me to 55. And I don't think that 4% difference is all that much, but I did come up with a large amount of, well, I came up with a maximum amount of attack up and I got quite a little bit of element, well, skill damage up. I got a loop because I wanna, I wanna cycle her ultimate. And then I came away with as much, you know, rage boosting, make my character more efficient as much as possible. This is because I use the fishing methods some of my earlier characters, I didn't use the fishing method. This is why you find that these are like all over the place. But once I learned to use the fishing method, I got a lot better results. Like all of these characters are the characters that I went. And I, and ironically, I did went back and I re-rolled, right? Sukiyomi's to get these results, right? You'll notice that I have a little bit less of these, so on and so forth. but. I'm all the way up, and up, right? So I definitely recommend fishing out using one of the three methods, or you can use them in combination, but yeah. Anyways, that's pretty much it. I just wanna talk about that. Hopefully that will help a lot of people by using one of those methods. Generally, it is just two methods, but the third one is just an addition and it's generally addition to the second method. The second method is a little more expensive and I would assume that's the method that more veteran players actually use. And you can use that with the third, which is pretty much, an, like I said, pretty much an addition to that to help to fish out more, you know, more red stats, generally speaking. But anyways, like I've always said, drop me a like or a dislike. I like them both and subscribe because that really helped the channel grow and drop a comment if you want. If you have, you know, maybe you have another method that you use, you know, you can drop that in the comment, but yeah, that is all for me. I will see you guys in another one.